So welcome to Eye to Eye. I'm Rami Tadaini from Price University, and it's my pleasure to have today Dr. Kyoko Ono Matsui from uh, Tokyo Medical and Dental <laughs> University, uh, a good friend, and everyone knows her for her knowledge in high myopia, pathologic myopia, and we are going to talk about. Thank you um, so much. Welcome. Welcome to Paris. <laughs> yes, Such thank a you long very much. I'm happy to come. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. And um, so many people think that high pathologic myopia is more an Asian issue, yes, which is, yes. I think, no more the case. We yes. have more and more in Europe. We are going yes. the same the mm -hmm. same pathway. Mm -hmm. But still, mm -hmm. you today, you have much yes. more pathologic myo myopia than we have. Yes. Could you make us an, introdu an introduction about that? How mm -hmm. is your feeling in Asia mm -hmm. about that? Mm -hmm. And... Uh, is it a big issue in yes. Japan? And yes. what do you think about it? Yes, it is a big issue. Actually, uh, in some epidemiological study, uh, like uh, his, the Hisayama study, pathologic myopia is the number one cause of severe vision loss in general population. So uh, yes, uh, glaucoma and diabetic retinopathy are the big causes. But for a severe impairment of vision, uh, pathologic myopia is the biggest cause of blindness in general population. So you use the term pathologic myopia. Yes. Could you teach us mm -hmm. the differences between yes. myopia, high yes. myopia, pathologic myopia, yeah. and other <laughs> terms around? Yeah, thank you very much for your questions. Actually, a pathologic myopia is recently defined as having pathologic complications in the fundus, uh, like myopic chorioretinal atrophy equal to or more severe than diffuse atrophy, or having posterior staphyloma. And uh, we think that the presence of staphyloma is important because by developing staphyloma, eye deformity occurs in the posterior segments of the eye in where uh, visually important tissues exist like optic nerve or macula. So having staphyloma uh, causes an visual impairment by macula uh, lesions development. Uh, high myopic eyes are known to be very difficult to make images of. Mm. The fundus images yes. are difficult, yes, everything is yes. difficult. Yes. Um, and now we have some new technologies coming, yes. helping us. Yes, uh, yes. So one of them is the, uh, the wild field OCT imaging yeah, yeah. that you have uh, promoted, made a lot of <laughs> works on this, so you're, you're a pioneer in this, yeah, in this field. So, uh, so could you say us more about what's mm -hmm. the capability of wild field OCT and why yes. you Yes. come up with this idea of having wide velocity yes. for this myopic patients. Yes, yes. Actually, uh, one one of my main motivation is that uh, we want to see the entire extent of posterior staphyloma because uh, staphylomas can occur in non-axially elongated eyes as well. So axial length uh, is an, a factor correlating uh, with uh, staphyloma development, but uh, the fact that it occurs also in non axially elongated eyes is independent of axial length measurement. We need to see staphyloma, but staphyloma is usually white, so we need a very wide scan to accommodate the full extent of staphyloma. It's a beginning. And uh, actually, Dr. Uh, Yoshimura at Kyoto University uh, invented this machine with Canon, and he kindly uh, introduced, uh, was, uh, gave me an uh, opportunity to use this machine. And I think this fits very well to high myopia because lesions can occur in periphery as well, in addition to macula, and staphyloma is big. So wide and deep observation very fits well uh, with pathologic myopia. I'm very happy to hear that because you have published wonderful papers on the MRI images of the, of the eye, yes. and that w was difficult to reproduce, but yes. with the OCT it will be easier to use for the patient. Yes, can, yes. Can you tell us a little bit more about mm -hmm. what you already have seen mm -hmm. or find with mm -hmm. this OCT mm -hmm. in these myopic eyes? Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, we see that uh, uh, by 
by exam by showing the full extent of stepnoma, we can see and also different from 3D MRI in OCT images. We can see how retina, macular, optic nerve, and mechanical damaged by eye deformity. So we can uh, visualize the relationship between nerves, tissue, and uh, scleral deformity. And it's one point. And also we can see a uh, relationship with staphyloma and myopic traction tensile disease. And uh, uh, especially in eyes with staphyloma, outer retinal schizis does not go beyond the staphyloma edge. It's restricted in the staphylomatous area. And also we are now, uh, we have been examining vitreous too. And in highly myopic eyes, vitreous is uh, pathologic, but it's still difficult to see. But uh, when we examine vitreous, we need to see a wide extent because it's a mass and a large tissue and moving. So when they exert vitreous retinal traction, they act as a mass. So wide and uh, deep observation is uh, beneficial in for many aspects in pathologic myopia. So you, you mean that with wild field OCT, not only we have a wild field, but we mm -hmm. have also a depth of field which yes, is yes. increased, and yes. we can see the vitreous yes. and the retina at the same yes. time and understand better yes, what's happening. Yes, that's right, yes. Actually, uh, more than the, the width, depth is important, because usually uh, in hyalomorphic eyes, the uh, peripheral part is flipped over, and it doesn't fit the depth of the OCD image. But in 5 millimeter depth, we can see severe up and down, and also this device is swept source, so we can see from vitreous through uh, scleral and also uh, extraocular tissue uh, with a high resolution because of the source nature. Excellent, excellent. So that was for research side. Yes. Is it available for mm -hmm. clinical use? Yes. And how do you see someone using in clinics? What's yes. the benefit for the clinician? Yeah, thank you very much for asking me that. And actually, when I see many blind patients uh, with optic nerve damage and macular damage, I we think that it is too late when they develop uh, severe complications. So before they develop such lesions, we need to uh, uh, treat staphylomas or prevent it. So we now uh, detect early signs of staphyloma and also quantify the degree of staphyloma and we are going to make a scleral cross collagen, cross-linking therapy before developing severe staphyloma. And I think it will be a one good way to keep good vision in the entire life for uh, patients with pathologic myopia. So for that purpose, this device is also uh, inevitable. Necessary. So the device, if my understanding is correct, will be enable everyone to diagnose the staphyloma yes. and hopefully send yes. the patient yes. and to, to prevent the yes. increase of staphyloma. That's, yes. that's the key point. Yes, that's a key to, point. To how to, yes. to prevent the disease. Yes, that's right. Yes. So do you really have good faith in the fact that we will be able to mm -hmm. finally limit the increase of mm -hmm. the, uh, the staphyloma in a yeah. midterm? Maybe yes. not tomorrow but the uh, day after <laughs> yes, yes i hope so and in addition to uh, uh scleral collagen cross-linking i think um, some other uh, therapies like uh, scleral collagen regeneration or other techniques can be uh, applied so in the midterm yes because sclera is a shell of the globe so uh, treating nervous tissue would be difficult but just the shell uh maybe uh, uh treatment would be easier, or I, I can't say that, but I hope. Yes. Yeah, because surgical techniques yes. were not easy to do until now, so you, yes. are, you, you, you are presenting here new techniques that may help doing better, or maybe new drugs too. Yes, yes. Uh, actually, one of them that you many people talk about mm -hmm. is the data on the atropine, low, low yes. concentration atropine yes. that may prevent yes. the elongation of eye. Mm -hmm. um, do you use it? Mm -hmm. Do you, is it available in Japan? Yeah. And yeah. 
Um, what's your thought about this? Yes, yes. And actually, uh, low dose atropine. We are go- we we are we started actually Santen uh, Pharmaceutical Company uh, studied clinical trials of the low dose atropine in Japan. So uh, it's a it's a two year study, and I think uh, this will be widely used for myopic patients. But uh, I'm not sure if uh, the reduce uh, deduc- reduction of myopia can prevent pathological myopia development in the future, it's questionable because uh, the area uh, which elongates in usual myopic eyes is the equator of the eye. So, but uh, in pathologic myopia, posterior segment deformity occurs. So it may not be the same cause. But uh, uh, of course, we need a long term study if a uh, reduction of myopia in childhood eventually prevents uh, staphyloma development or uh, pathologic myopia. Excellent. So we really understood very clearly that the problem is the staphyloma mm-hmm. in pathologic myopia yes. and that may not be prevented by mm-hmm. the regular drugs, which yes. will work for other myopic ants yes. and we will need specific treatment for that. Yes. So waiting to to, to have this wild mm-hmm. field OCT yes. in yes. our clinics, yes. uh, we already have wild field fundus photos, yes. OCT, yes. OCTAs and yes. others. So how do you see the use of these mm-hmm. techniques today? Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you recommend as uh, the basic imaging mm-hmm. of a mm-hmm. pathologic or supposed pathologic myopic eyes? Mm-hmm. What's your recommendation or practice? Yeah, we actually, we, we take a many, we, we perform many different kind of uh, imaging, uh, including optos and uh, white field OCT and OCT angiography, yes. And uh, especially uh, pathologic myopia is a, uh, disease which uh, damages the entire retina. So we need to see in wide images. So, But we also want to see the details in the macula or optic nerve. So wide images and also uh, narrow. <laughs> yeah, high many, magnification. Yeah, high magnification, field. yes. Many different kinds of images are needed, yes. So it's, it remains a complex disease and we yes. need multimodal imaging to understand yes. what to Yes, what to that's do right, yes. It's, do, yeah. it's a disease uh, which is suitable for imaging, yes. So um, thank you very much. So I think we will we will be now more optimistic because mm-hmm. new imaging coming, but mm-hmm. also you say that mm-hmm. new uh, treatment may come yes, to, yes. to prevent this, uh, yes. this cause of blindness, which yes. in Asia and in Japan you yes, said is yes. one first yes, or one of yes. the first. Yes. And in Europe, actually, it's increasing too. So we hope that you will find the solution beca- before mm-hmm. it becomes an epidemic in yes, Europe too. Yes, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Yes. Thank you for joining us. For more information on this and related topics, please visit us at yourretina.org. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you.